the Easter service began. Christ the Lord is risen today. The music swelled. Everybody joined in. It was a great, a great Easter once again. And when the proclamation was made, Christ is risen, the congregation shouted back, Christ is risen indeed. And the little boy leaned over to his mom and said, didn't he do that last year? Easter is the most surprising event in human history, but it's also the most unsurprising event in the church. If you know anything at all about Jesus as a Christian, you, knew, you know that he died on a cross and that he was raised on Easter, raised from the dead. It's the, the central pro- proclamation. It is the, the gospel message. And you've probably celebrated Easter over and over again. Easter after Easter. And you know how it should go. To have the perfect Easter, well, what what would that look like for you? What would the perfect Easter be? Easter as it should be. Well, for many of us, Easter as it should be is a packed church. The largest attendance of the entire year. You come into to church and everybody is smiling. You see people you haven't seen in a long time. And there are hugs and there are handshakes. And it's hard to find a seat. You might even have to go all the way down to the front. There at the front you'll find flowers, Easter lilies and all kinds of flowers making the place look so festive. And it is a service that you look forward to, the Easter service, when everybody is there and everything is so gorgeous and beautiful. People might even dress up a little bit because it's Easter. Kids might be wearing button-up shirts or, or dresses. And in the old days, if your memory goes back that far, there were the Easter hats. My grandmother always had her hats. Easter as it should be, a packed church service. That's how some of us see the perfect Easter, or at least Easter as it should be. But maybe for you, Easter as it should be is something a little less crowded. Maybe for you, Easter as it should be is is the sunrise service. A crowd, yes, but it's smaller than, than the packed crowd inside the the church. And the sunrise service could be held inside the church. The very first sermon I ever preached was sunrise service at my home church, River Hills Church in Burnsville. And I don't know why, but the youth were always chosen to deliver the sunrise service. The people least likely to want to get up at sunrise We're leading the sunrise service, and one year I was asked if I would deliver the message. And as we were moving here this last year, I found my file of old sermons, and I looked back, and I found that first Easter message. And I have to say that the message wasn't great, but the people were gracious. So maybe for you, it's a sunrise service. And and a lot of sunrise services are, are outside, Perhaps they are uh, they're in a cemetery. One of the services that I'll never forget is when I was a student down in North Carolina and the Easter sunrise service was in the cemetery of this little rural church. And the cemetery went back to before the Civil War. And walking into that cemetery kind of felt like walking towards the tomb like the women did that morning. And it was a warm, warm day, gorgeous. And the message was proclaimed that Christ is risen. Not all of them have been so warm and wonderful. I also remember a time as, as a young boy going to Easter sunrise service with my grandma and grandpa in Barron, Wisconsin. And the service that day was outdoors on a hillside. It was a, a great gathering 
but the weather was a little bit like today. It was nasty, cold, raw. I, I believe there was sleet and snow. And into the mix, midst of that, the message was proclaimed that he is risen. So for you, Easter as it should be might be a sunrise service, wherever that's held. Then again, perhaps it has less to do with worship for you than all the things that surround it. That it happens on a beautiful spring day where the crocus are blooming, the grass is greening, and all your family and friends have gathered for a great ham dinner or whatever it is that you serve when you gather together to celebrate great events. You may remember even back in the day when when kids might receive live rabbits or chickens, little chicks, as an, an Easter gift. Nowadays, we, we give out peeps. Or we have a, maybe an, an Easter egg hunt. Last year, I was uh, taking part in helping set up a community egg hunt. And I don't know how many eggs we had. We had thousands of plastic eggs stuffed with candy and prizes. It might have even been tens of thousands. And several hundred kids lined up with expectation. We couldn't exactly hide the eggs because there were so many eggs that it it blanketed the lawn. But it didn't take but a minute from when they said go for the kids to move through and to vacuum up all those eggs and to put them in their baskets. It was a great, great Easter. And maybe your Easter day ends with you taking a walk in the park and it's filled with other people with the same idea and you run into family or you run into uh, even strangers and you stop and you talk with them. It's Easter as it should be. We all know how Easter should be. A packed church, a sunrise service, a spring day with all our family and friends. But not this year. This year, COVID-19 said, surprise, not going to happen. That Easter that you've come to expect, not this year. And it has thrown us for a loop. It's knocked us off balance. It's it's shaken our expectations because everything is different. We've been surprised, maybe for the first time at Easter in a long, long time. We've been surprised, like that first Easter, when the angel appeared to the women at the tomb. We've heard in Matthew 28 where it says, there's a violent earthquake and an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. In other words, they were scared to death. They were so surprised. It was so shocking that first Easter that the guards became like dead men. And the women, too, they're they're afraid as well. They must be because the angel says to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. And so the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples, and suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. And they came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Jesus might as well have said, Surprise, it's me. Here I am. And they are both joyful and fearful because it has been such a surprise. That first Easter. That first Easter was the greatest surprise imaginable. It was also the greatest gift because their Lord and Savior, the one that they loved, is there with them again. What a gift that first Easter and in the same way, the disruptions and the, the surprise of this Easter, well, it's also a gift. In fact, uh, 
I would say that there are three gifts that this surprising, disruptive, strange COVID-19 Easter brings. And normally we think of three gifts at Christmas. We think of gold and frankincense and myrrh. But these Easter gifts, though they are not as tangible as those Christmas gifts, I think they're even more important. So here's what I see as three gifts for this unusual Easter. The first gift is just that, the gift of an unusual Easter. We can't do things the same way that we've always done. Life as usual, the same old, same old, even if their cherished traditions can't go on this Easter. And so we have the opportunity to experience new things, to break out of old habits, to get creative in the ways that we connect with our risen Savior this year. We have an opportunity given by this unusual Easter to experience Christ in a new way. Or maybe, maybe we, we have an opportunity to gain appreciation for all those old things that we did that we never gave much thought to. There's the old song that talks about paving paradise and putting up, put up a parking lot. And there's a line in it that says, don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you've got till it's gone? The same is probably true with Easter. And now that this unusual Easter has broken in, we have the opportunity to experience it anew, appreciation for what it means to gather together as the people of Christ to celebrate his resurrection and to join and experience his new life or, or even to gather as family and friends. I don't think I'll ever get together for a celebration of Easter without remembering this one when we couldn't get together. So the first gift that we have of this surprising Easter is the gift of an unusual Easter. The second gift is the gift of an untimely Easter. I always thought that, that Easter happened at just the perfect time because it's spring, and spring is a time of new life. Back when we were raising sheep on the farm, this was the time of lambs, and the kids would love to, to bottle feed the lambs or to play with them. It's also the time for, for birds and flowers pushing up. Easter and spring, they just, just go together. It's a time of new life. In fact, the name Easter probably comes from an old English word for April, for this time at spring, Easter month, April, spring, Easter. But you know, for half the world, it's not spring right now. For those in the southern hemisphere, this isn't spring, but April is fall. It's the equivalent of the middle of October, a time of the year when the leaves are falling off the trees, when the flowers are dying, and when the birds are flying away. For half the world, this is a time of death. And isn't that a more fitting time to celebrate the resurrection? Resurrection and new life in Christ is not about something normal happening like spring and the blooming of the flowers. It's about something surprising. It's about new life in the midst of death. It's like things budding and blooming as fall begins. So we have the gift of, of an untimely Easter because this year we don't know when we're going to have our big Easter celebration. Oh, it's wonderful that we have... Uh, have this technology to be able to, to broadcast this service. But when we do get back together, when we're allowed to meet together again, we are going to celebrate Easter. And we're going to do it upright, and it's going to be big. And everything that you're missing right now, we're going to have that. Now, we don't know when that's going to be, because it could be summer, it could be fall. God forbid it could even be winter. But whenever it is, 
we are going to gather and we're going to celebrate the resurrection. Because really, it's probably more fitting to celebrate the resurrection at a surprising time, at an untimely time, at a time when there is death around, rather than the springtime that we get every year. So look forward to that, whenever that may be. Another gift, the gift of an untimely Easter. And the third gift, the third gift is the gift of an unburdened Easter. I was so looking forward to to being with you this Easter, my first Easter back in the local church, back with you, to be able to, to all be together and celebrate a normal Easter. But I have to confess that my normal Easter wasn't always the most calm or even the most resurrection-focused. See, as a, as a pastor, uh, I couldn't travel on Easter. And so often the, the, the friends and families, they would come to our house to celebrate Easter. They would worship with us, and then we would have Easter dinner. But that meant that the Saturday before Easter was not only pre- preparing for the services, but it was getting the house ready for guests. And it was getting the food bought and, and starting to put it together. And then when we had kids at home, then it was, was hiding Easter eggs and things in the morning and then going to sunrise service and then the big celebration service and coming back and putting on the big dinner and then cleaning up. And by the time Easter was over, I was always exhausted. And it took me several days to recover. But this year it's going to be different. This year, all of that has been stripped away. And I can focus on the real gift of Easter, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Easter has been unburdened for all of us. So that's the third gift, the gift of an unburdened Easter so we can focus on that which is essential, which is what Easter has always been about the surprising resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. See, Easter is not really about Easter egg hunts and ham dinners. It's not uh, beautiful clothes and beautiful flowers. It's not full churches or beautiful spring days. Easter is God's surprising middle finger to all that would say that death wins. It's new life in a time of dying. It's hope in a time of fear. It's a promise that Christ is with us even in this time of COVID-19 when all the normal things, the Easter that we expect, we can't have. But it is a promise that Christ is with us because he is risen. And because he lives, we live too. And ain't no grave going to hold us down. Have a happy Easter. Let us pray. Risen Christ, surprise us again. Show up in our midst even when all our Easter expectations have been shattered. Be there with the gift of of an unusual Easter, an untimely Easter, an unburdened Easter. And allow us to celebrate, allow us to celebrate your resurrection and the resurrection life that you give to us. In your name we pray. Amen.